candidate. Uh, whether or not he's electable is a whole different ballgame. Uh, but uh, no one could have told me that Donald Trump was even going to run. I'm one of those who went on the air, and I've been saying it for a number of years. He comes out every four or eight years with his red tie and his suit, and he talks about running and running and running, and then he doesn't run. And I thought that, if, that he, if he did run, he would not divulge his finances. I also didn't believe he was as wealthy as he is. Surprise, 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 surprise. I didn't see Ben Carson coming. I liked him. I interviewed him shortly after his kind of coming out party when he dissed President Obama during the National Prayer Breakfast and said we ought to get rid of Obamacare and go to uh, health savings accounts. I interviewed him and I said, people are talking about you running for president. Let me just tell you something. I think you're too soft-spoken and I think you're too nice. I told him that. I still think he's too soft-spoken and still, still too nice, but I'm surprised he's doing as well as he's doing. He's Carly Fiorina lost by 10 points here in California, but this is California, and now she's doing well. I wouldn't have predicted any of that stuff, so I'm out of the prediction business. I have no idea what's going to happen. It, it, it is a very unique uh, election year, and all the, it's the year of the outsider, as they say. Um, and, and so we have Trump, Fiorina, and uh, By the way, Carson. Ben is the only person I know on radio who talks faster than I do. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, my, my first, I love that. For people who don't know, my first radio appearance ever was on Larry's show when I was oh. 16 years old. And actually, we, we, sped it, we sped each other up so much that we ended up back in time in 1955 <laughs> trying to fix up Marty McFly's parents. It was very bizarre. And I, and I met uh, uh, Ben's dad, uh, who uh, is a, uh, a musician. And uh, Ben brought me a book called From Time Immemorial by a woman named Joan Peters. And it was the best book I've ever read on understanding the whole Middle East situation. And Joan Peters is a British, uh, she's, not a, she's not an academic, but she was involved, interested in the issue of why it is that uh, Israel was created and why it is that uh, Israel was dominating the poor Palestinians. And, uh, and she assumed that her research would lead her to believe that Israel was kind of a fictitious place uh, and um, the Palestinians are the ones that had the upper hand morally in the area. And after she finished the book, she was shocked to learn that uh, in 1948, uh, the United Nations divided up the area into Palestine and into Israel. Uh, within hours or so of the British pulling out, uh, Israel was invaded by half a dozen states at the same time. They've been on a, on a war footing ever since then, but the land that the United Nations uh, gave to the Palestinians was five times larger than Gaza and the West Bank. If they hadn't invaded, they would have had their own state. Anyway, she was shocked to hear all of this, so she wrote this book, and it kind of changed my point of view. Uh, and but for Ben introducing me to that book, I never would have uh, learned as much as I did. Well, you know, they both talk about how fast they speak. Imagine how difficult that is for me. <laughs> All right. um, look, let's talk a little bit about um, Hillary Clinton and uh, her chances of the, the nomination. I have said before on my show and otherwise that uh, I, I would not be surprised if she pulled out. I'm not predicting that she's pulling out. What do you think? Do you think that uh, there's a likelihood that she'll pull out? No, she she will not she will not pull out unless unless you know it, it unless Barack Obama pulls her out to jail like that that will really be the only way that she pulls out. Yeah, if, if Obama appointed an independent uh, prosecutor, right, exactly. uh, she'd be dead. But he's not going to do that. I, I agree. Unless unless if Joe Biden starts to pull ahead in the polls, you could see him do that just to move her out. And this has always been the thing about Biden. You know, Biden is sitting out and he's going to jump in probably late next week. I think that he's, he's waiting until after the next Democratic debate, and then it's a win-win for him. If Hillary wins the debate, he says, well, it wasn't a big deal. I wasn't even there. Of course she won the debate. And if she loses the debate, then he says, look how vulnerable Hillary is. I'm jumping in, and I'll save the party. Uh, and so it's not Bernie Sanders. Uh, if, if he were to jump in and do one of two things, either have Elizabeth Warren endorse him or have Barack Obama endorse him, he would win the nomination. Because right now, Hillary, you have to look at the demographics of the various support bases among the Democrats. Right now, if you, if you look at Bernie Sanders' support base, it's upper crust white liberals in northeastern states, places like California. And so he's going to win New Hampshire. He probably will win Iowa if things continue to go as they are. But she's going to dominate the South because she has a very heavy ethnic minority base. Well, if Joe Biden jumps in, he's very blue collar. So that'll put him in good stead in places like Ohio and places like Pennsylvania. He could challenge her for that minority base if Barack Obama endorses Joe Biden, right? If, if Obama endorses Biden, then all of a sudden the, the, the entire argument shifts. So I could see that happening. What I, what I can't see happening is Hillary pulling out. I mean, she, like, prenatally was running for this office. So, so the idea that she's going to give up now, I mean, you would, she's a zombie candidate. You, you would have to pickaxe her in order to stop her from, from running for president. What, what about the scandals that, that, that will plague her? I'm not, not saying this for her to... This won't make any difference. It, I, no, no, I understand. No, no. Not as pressure, but do you think these scandals will continue on? The, the Benghazi scandal, of course, email scandal, the foundation scandal. Uh, are, are they yeah. going to plague her all the way? In other of words, course. she could be on the defensive the entire campaign. She'll have to answer all those questions, but 
Um, 40% of the country does not care. 40% believes that it's these dastardly Republicans that are, that are forming a conspiracy. Bill Clinton was impeached. Nobody even mentions it. Bill Clinton has been credibly accused of rape by a woman on Dateline NBC, not on Fox, on Dateline NBC. Nobody even knows her name. Hillary was accused on television of verbally intimidating a rape survivor. Nobody even cares. So 40% of the country doesn't care what you do. Uh, you could have her on video with an ax uh, uh, hitting a homeless person in, in Central Park, nobody would care. I, t I totally agree with this. The, 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 the idea that the Clintons are going to be brought down by scandal neglects the fact that they are the Clintons. The, 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 the scandal will never touch them. In fact, Bill Clinton, there's, there's something charming about the roguishness of the Clintons in that there's – this is why – if Hillary were Bill, this, this election would be over already because Bill is so open about the fact that he's super criminal that everybody just kind of goes, okay, fine, well, at least he's honest about the fact that he's right. a criminal. Right? Hillary still wants to be seen as honest, and so that's difficult for her because she's, she's trying to play it off like, no, really, I don't really mean this. If she just came off and said, yeah, you know what, I didn't want all you to see in my emails, and so I put them in the server, and oops, they're gone. <laughs> right. Right? If she just said that, that would pretty much end it, seriously, like it, because there would be no place for people to go. But she, she, she actually the, – the difference between Hillary and Bill is that Bill doesn't care if people like him, and so people like him. Hillary desperately cares whether people like her, and so no one likes her. This is true of all the people in your life, by the way. If there are people in your life who you know who are desperate for people to like them, you despise them. You don't want to be anywhere near them. But if there are people who are in your life and you really like them a lot, it's generally because there are people who don't give a damn what anybody thinks, and so they kind of say and do what they want to do. And, and this is the difference between Bill and, and Hillary Clinton. Scandals are not going to take her down. The only thing that can take Hillary Clinton down uh, is not her own corruption. It's it, it, the you know, the only thing that, that might plausibly be able to take her down from the Republican side of the aisle is just the fact that she's so wildly unlikable. Um, it, it, the, the fact that she is, is so difficult to get. But you, but you need somebody who's – this is why I'm skeptical of Rubio against her. I, I just think that Rubio is, is – it's – he lacks he, – he, he, no one loves Rubio. Everyone likes Rubio. No one loves Rubio. Interesting. One of the things like, – because I want to – I'm going to explore that a little bit with Hillary Clinton. Um, And she lost. And, and I think that one of the reasons why Obama, it was not just, a, by the way, I don't like to call him Barack Obama. Let's yeah. just agree to call him Obama. Thank you. You guys uh, do share the same first name. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and he spells it wrong. What's up with that? All right. Uh, so Hillary Clinton, she, she was inevitable at the time. And Obama comes on the scene, and then they say, well, the reason why is that they, the country wanted to have a first black president before a first woman president. Mm -hmm. I demur. I, I think that. I, it was because it, Hillary Clinton had such little passion in what she was about and what she was going to, to pursue I, that Obama made it so easy for the country to move I, toward. I, I think you are unfair to Obama. He was and is an extraordinary candidate. Yes. Extremely oh. articulate, uh, good personal story. Uh, it's not like uh, uh, he didn't take it away from her. He snatched it away from her. He earned it away from her. Yeah. And you're right that people did. He also stole it away from her. Bust people into Iowa. You're, you're, you're right that he that he that that he is the first black president, and there was that going on. Uh, but so was Herman Cain. So so would have been a lot of people. Yeah. He was he is a extraordinarily gifted politician, uh, and he and he took it. He earned it. Yeah. Well, I, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna land somewhere between you guys on this one. He yes, he earned it because he he won it. But it, at the same time, did it did it impact the election and the media? coverage that he was a black candidate? Absolutely, right? I mean, because the fact is that Hillary, Hillary was an extraordinarily weak candidate ready for a fall. People forget that she didn't finish second in Iowa. She finished third in Iowa, right? John Edwards finished second in Iowa. So it wasn't, so Edwards is the black Obama. I mean, they, they were very similar in terms of how they campaign, mm -hmm. but the, he was doing the two countries kind of stuff. He was, he was a very gifted speaker. He was young. He was good looking. Obama was a better candidate than he was, but there, there's no question in my mind that I mean, there is a leftist scale of victimology, and right now, you know, black is still at the top, yeah. and then it goes gay, and then it goes, and then it goes Hispanic, and then it goes woman, and and way down at the bottom are the Jews, right? I, I, and and I, so I, the, I still, I, I still think Ben, you're un underestimating Obama. First of all, uh, Biden is not Obama. Uh, I agree, Biden's not Obama. And, and so, and so, there's nobody like like him to come but along. I'll right tell now you this: if Kamala Harris, 
right? If Kamala Harris decided to just skip right over the Senate race and run for president, I think she could beat Hillary. Well, the other thing, remember the Iraq war was a issue in that debate, in that, in that campaign. Mm -hmm. And Barack Obama uh, came out in October of 2002 and gave a full-throated opposition to the war. Now, whether he did it tactically just to maneuver himself in order to distinguish himself from the people he's running for in Senate in, in Illinois, I don't know. But he gave a full-throated opposition to the war, called it a dumb war, and then talked about why he thought we shouldn't go there. And it turns out by the time the election rolls around, uh, many Americans, or certainly those on the left, thought it was a dumb war. He was positioned to do that. Meanwhile, Hillary's trying to explain why she voted for the war. I voted for it. I kind of didn't really want to vote for it. I thought it wasn't really a declaration for war, blah, 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 blah. And you have this guy who could say, I voted against the war. I said it's a dumb war, and I've got all the same left-wing views that Hillary has. Vote for me. I mean, I also think there was, the, I agree that the Iraq war played into it. I also think that what Obama campaigned on, it was such a genius campaign. I mean, 2008 was a genius campaign because what happened is that the country was so divided at the end of the Bush era and people figured it can't get more divided, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it was, it was so divided, everybody hated each other and here comes Obama telling everybody that in my very person, I'm going to rectify the greatest breach that the country has ever suffered, the breach of race. Right? I'm going to bring everybody together. We're not red states, we're not blue states, we're not black people, we're not white people. We are all people, right? We are the world. And then you, and then you get Michael Jackson singing all crazy in the background. And, and, it's, and that, that was what it was going to be. And people wanted the feel-good moment. And I think that for a lot of folks, a lot of folks, because the fact is Obama won less votes second time than he did the first time. They, for, for a lot of folks, they woke up the next morning, they go, this was a really great symbolic thing. I mean, there were, people, there were people on the right who were doing this. Laura Ingram was saying, it's a great symbolic thing. We have our first black president. And then people woke up the next morning and went, oh, yeah. This guy's our president. Like this is a, this is a problem. But I also think that you know when when you talk about the the kind of buyer's remorse that that accrues to all of this, it just demonstrates something that's very problematic. I do think that we need a monarchy in this country, a, a symbolic monarchy. You know, a group of celebrities who we can worship on the side and don't actually have any power. And maybe we elect them. Maybe maybe we elect the president of Israel. Like the president of Israel has no power. The prime minister of Israel is the powerful one, and then what you have about, the president of Israel. What about the Kardashians? No? They, right, exactly. <laughs> Kardashians would be perfect. Right. Right, I don't know whether I don't know whether Bruce is the, the father-in-law or the mother-in-law, but it's uh, but it's but it's all right. But, but we elect. But what we could do is we could elect all like right. a transgender <laughs> a transgender lesbian black little person as the as the symbolic head of the country, just to demonstrate how diverse we are. And then you actually have the elected leader, who's just some bureaucrat who's good at doing stuff. All right, <laughs> all right, <laughs> man. I, to, I, I can't work I was, under these conditions. I, I, was in, I was in Boston in 2004 mm -hmm. when Obama gave that speech. I was in the, uh, in the arena, and I watched people standing up, cheering, and I had my producer with me. I said, you know, this, uh, there's no blue state, there's no red state, there's just one state. There's no this, there's no that, there's just one that. I said, he hasn't said anything, and the guy is going to get elected president. Watch and see. He says, get out of here. I said, watch and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, said wanna, nothing. I mean, yeah. anybody could have given that speech. He Reagan still hasn't said anything. He's just done a lot of stuff. Yeah. I want to transition a little bit to, um, to the Middle East. It's a, such an important area of the world and, and such an interesting and important topic today.